Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech, bringing you a deck tech from M13. This is a midnight release booster draft that I played in this last week. Drafted a green black deck that I was extremely happy with. The match count was three and one, and the game count for the tournament was seven and two. Uh, even the round that I lost was extremely close, and I'll get to that a little bit later. But let's jump into what I ended up drafting and ended up playing. I played 16 land, which is sometimes a little bit risky. Going down to 16 over 17 is not always the best, although it worked because the mana curve in this deck was pretty small, and I also had a Far Seek to help mana fix. Far Seek is incredible in this environment. Being able to grab a second land to support, it ramps, it color fixes, it just a great card overall. Let's move on and go with the with a little bit of a breakdown of the deck here. I was extremely happy with the green creature scheme. I got a nice mana curve with some two, three, four, and five drops topping out at six. I also got a really nice mythic for sealed, which is the primordial hydra. This guy can be cast at any point in time, and when you cast him, he must be dealt with right away. If you drop him on turn three, he's a two, two on turn four, and a four, four on turn after, and an eight, eight after that with trample cut. Coming. Uh, I dropped him early and was extremely happy. I also dropped him mid-game and he was just a threat that had to be dealt with. There's also a lot of nice synergies in these creatures. The Force Mage is decent by itself, but when combined with the Roaring Primadox is incredible. Plus two, plus two every turn is really nice. Garruk's Pack Leader also works extremely well with the Primadox and any of the larger creatures. The Timber Wolf Wolves here, they do only start out as 2-2s, two and a 2-2 two -two for 2 is decent in the draft, but grabbing a second one, I was very happy because that moves them on to 3-3s. Three you get them together and have a lot of damage. I really would have liked to have grabbed a third one to round out that group, but Two is still strong, and the Sentinel Spider is just incredible. Vigilance, Reach, 4-4 four, four in the 5 spot, and it's not the equivalent of a super strong uncommon or rare, but it's definitely one of the better commons. And the Vastwood Gorger just has a nice size body to it. 5-6 can be extremely good. It also works really well with some of the enchantments and other things that I got in the draft. The green spells also are really nice. Titanic Growth, I, I cannot praise enough. White has an equivalent that is plus two, plus four. Greens is just simply better. Prey Upon is one of the best sorcery speed removals. It would be nice if it was an instant, but it's still a strong sorcery, especially with those larger bodies. Farseek, I already mentioned, is just incredible for mana fixing. And the plummets here are very good, although they were sideboard. I was not playing those main deck. When you start to hit blue and white, or some of the exalted decks that try to get through a flyer, having that plummet is is very very strong it's also instant speed removal so if they try to enchant their flyer you can often get a two for one out of it having that instant speed removal is extremely useful in this environment there's not a lot of instant speed removal outside of some rack was my support color i was super happy to see a vampire nighthawk this is one of the top two or three commons and uncommons in the entire set for draft i death touch and lifelink it's very rare that one of those is not relevant, and often both of them are relevant. Also, the evasion flying is incredible. Uh, the It was clear to me on the second pack that the person to my left was drafting black uh, also, so I ended up moving it just to a support color. Ravenous Rats here combos extremely well with being able to be returned to your hand each turn. And the Bloodthorn Vampire is a decent two-drop, although unlike the Wolf, they get worse the more of them you have. I, I should have just left this at one. And Nephrox, Overlord of Grixis, is an incredible uh, game winner if he's not dealt with right away. My artifacts, I was a little divided on. Uh, this was the first time playing with the rings. The Ring of Xanthia for... 
regeneration and going on black creatures was definitely useful. Even putting it on my uh, green creatures, it helped. So it was useful for both, even when it wasn't getting the plus ones. The ring, the green ring here, is less useful off color, although it was primarily green, so I was very happy with it to add some extra power. If I was just splashing green, I probably would not play this ring because the plus one plus one is really the value to it. Trample's nice, but you've got to have really large creatures and green's the only one with it. Take advantage. So I do think that the black ring is definitely better than the green ring net. Chronobaton was clearly overvalued to me, and one one that slowly but surely pumps up is good on its face, but you must realize that you don't get to attack with him each turn that you're pumping him. And this was really kind of a 22nd, 23rd card to add in when I was deciding whether or not to splash another color. Uh, I would have happily put another wolf in his spot, or, or a decent... Uh, two drop or three drop over this guy. He's not as good as I, I initially thought. Now my black spells were some of the highlights in the deck. Essence Strain is incredible with a nice swing to it. Public Execution looks to be a little bit overpriced initially until you play it and you just crush people. And Mark of the Vampire is incredible. There's a bit of a risk in playing this as an enchantment, but the enchantment is so strong that the risk is worth it. You don't just run this out on turn four, because on turn four there's a very high chance that you'll get hit two for one, or at least removed with an unsummon, or or you could also get hit with the white enchantment, one white, one colorless, does not allow creatures to attack or block. Uh, so waiting until turn five or turn six, let your opponent put out a little bit of removal first on a lower hand size, then dropping this card to swing the game or to push your curve over the top is amazing. Sign in Blood is also just one of the best draw spells out there, especially if you've got a faster aggressive deck. In a defensive deck, this may not be the best because you're losing life, but also the ability to give your opponent two cards and have them lose two life is a nice way to end a game also. Okay, let's take a minute here and look at the different picks that were put forward in each pack. Pack one, pick one was the Primordial Hold Hydra. I'm very happy to be in green. Green's got the best mana acceleration and fixing in the environment. It also has a nice combination of creatures. There was also a decent green creature that I thought might table in the same pack. So I was happy to put myself solidly in green. Pack two just reinforced that I wanted to be in green. The Roaring Primadox does appear to have a little bit of a downside in having to return a creature to your hand, but if you combine it with enough of these comes into play effects, it can also be a very large upside. And I'm gonna talk about the philosophy of using this a little bit later. Pack two, I really needed a support color and opening the Vampire Nighthawk gave me uh, an incredible follow-up color. A little bit leery using it as a support color with the double black. I have uh, avoided it in a sealed pool that I talked about earlier because of the, the double black, so I knew I was going to need some other good black cards. person to my left ended up drafting black, and it wasn't until pack three that I was able to really solidify the black. Uh, the Force Mage, though, was a great second pick for me. The rest of the pack was a little bit light, but already having the Roaring Primadox made this an incredible card. On pack three, opening the Mark of the Vampire gave me a nice end to my curve and a good way to punch through in those races. And then having the Overlord pass to me was just incredible. This is one of those bombs that you're very happy to pick it, as pick one in either pack one or pack two. The person to my right was clearly not in black, although this almost seems like a reason to switch to black opening this in pack three because of the incredible chance of it being removal every turn. These Next thing I gotta talk about here is steals. Steals are cards that you get really late in the draft that you really should not get. All of these cards came between pick eight and pick 14. Things that should 
go in the one to four category. A few of these I would even consider strong first turn picks depending on the pack. The other thing about these is that every single one of these is splashable. Even if you are not in their colors or you've only decided on one color, this does not commit you to a second color. If you've got a Farseek or some way to go search for a land, you can you can often splash them with just two basic lands in the deck. And each one of these is also removal. In a limited environment, removal is extremely important and being able to splash for it is incredible. The Searing Spear here is instant speed and amazing. Public execution is incredible, even at the six casting cost. O-Ring is a little bit weaker than it used to be. A lot of people are planning for Rancor, maybe even main decking and a race, but it's still a very strong removal spell. And Essence Strain has the ability to get through a few points of damage in that aggressive deck or kill a creature. It's one of the top five best common and uncommon black cards to pick. Now I did have one really rough round this was round two and the card that really swung the game entirely was switcheroo i this is a strong pick one pack one or pack two and even splashable pack three this is an attempt to fix what was clearly overpowered in mind control or control magic they keep making the card a little bit weaker each time but in this case, I think they may have actually made the card a little bit stronger than weaker by making this a sorcery instead of an enchantment in a format that has Rancor. The re exchange of creatures is permanent in many cases where otherwise a disenchant or a race would have removed the enchantment entirely. The third game that I was involved in, in the one round that I lost, I had my opponent down to six, I had heavy beat down on the field, and my opponent only had a single one three. Switcheroo grabbed my large vigilant spider, shut down my attacks, and gave me back his useless one three, and swung the game at that point. This is an incredible card, definitely one to look out for in your one, two, or three pack picks and what shocked me the most was talking to my opponent afterwards he mentioned that he got this as a 12th pick at his table i just it blew my mind that not only did he have this incredible bomb but he was able to pick it up so late in the draft if there's one thing you pull away from this video it's the value of switcheroo and that it should definitely be picked much sooner in the my mvp for this tournament was clearly the roaring primadox he came and bit me hard in one game but in four games he was able to simply put away the game early and crush my opponent i love this card and this is the design philosophy and play style that i really like playing thank you this has been brian rowe with mythic mtg tech also if you have any comments or ideas on how to improve this video or on what i could have played a little bit differently cards that i may have over or undervalued i'd love to hear those in the comments thanks